Hi, welcome to this video where we're going to look at double digit multiplication. So we're going to look at 15 multiplied by 24 or 15 groups of 24. Now in previous videos, we've talked about how we can use representations to show a multiplication. And we're going to do that again today. Don't forget, if you enjoy this video and find it valuable, let us know and make sure that you hit subscribe so that you find out about future videos. Okay, let's get to it. Every multiplication can be represented either as groups, 15 groups with 24 in each group, or as an array slash rectangle. So I can draw a rectangle that is 15 by 24. Now often I don't draw these to scale. They're just a quick representation. So let me show you one on a group. If we look at this rectangle on the whiteboard, we've gone 24 squares across and 15 down. And the number of squares inside that rectangle is the answer to our problem. 15 rows of 24. Now we can partition both of these numbers so that we end up with four rectangles. 24 is 20 plus four. Managed to use the wrong color there, but I'm sure you get the gist. So we draw down here, splitting up our 20 and four. Now we have our 15 is 10 plus 5. So we're breaking it into smaller multiplication so that the student will understand or be able to carry out. Now, if your child hesitates at multiplying by 20, you could partition it further so that you in fact have six rectangles there, which is 10 plus 10. Okay, so that's a physical representation exactly to scale and we can prove it later on if we wanted to skip count in 24s or actually count every grid space. But let's go back to my quick sketch here. So we've got 15, which was 10 plus 5. And we've got our 20 plus 4. If I set this out in a more traditional way of setting out a multiplication, normally we would leave two lines here. We're going to do it in four, and I'll explain the reason why when we get to it. But the first multiplication would be five times four, and that's this rectangle right here. Five times four equals 20. So we're going to write that down. Our next multiplication would be five times 20. Note the wording. I'm not saying five times two because it's not five times two. It's five times 20 or five times two tens. Five times 20 is this rectangle. Five times 20 is 100. No mention of putting down zeros at any point. They're tricks, they work, but they don't work if you don't understand them. Let's have a look at the next multiplication. We've got 10 here and 10 lots of four, which is our rectangle right here. 10 multiplied by four equals 40. And I write that down. And then finally, over here, is our final rectangle, our 10 by 20, which is 200. 10 by 20, 200. Now, because we want the entire rectangle, we have to add the four rectangles together. Zero, 20 and 40 will give us 60. 100 and 200 will give us 360. 
Let me compare that to perhaps a more traditional way that you may have been shown this algorithm. Okay, so the first step would be to multiply by the five. Five times four is 20, which we had here, but we're told to put down the zero and carry the two. Five times 20 was 100, plus the two, which is in fact 20, becomes 120. We've just done in one step those two steps. And that can cause a lot of confusion for students. We're multiplying and adding as we go along. As we do the next step, we now multiply by 10. 10 times four is 40. We carry the four, which is in fact four tens. 10 times 20 is 200, plus the four tens is 240. We've now done those two steps. And then to finish off, we add. So using the rectangle to represent the multiplication gives students a visualization or a visual cue as to the multiplications that they're doing. They won't miss out any of the four rectangles there that will come together. It also means by doing it this way that we are not multiplying and adding in the one line or the one step. And I think it makes it much more easy for a student to understand and build up their understanding of the multiplication because it actually follows what we're doing here rather than trying to condense it too quickly without understanding. Once your student understands this, you'll be able to transfer them to this model. But don't try and do it too quickly. It's better for them to get this right and then move here without trying to remember a whole heap of tricks, not using the correct language, using things like putting down zeros and carrying twos instead of 20 and so on. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you find it useful to use with your students. And please do leave a comment and hit the bell so that you'll receive notifications. Don't forget, we have a lot of resources for free use over on the learningyou.com.au website.